Hello there. I hope everyone is doing well. My name is Charles Morgan. Word is Alive Ministries. This morning I am going to be reading from the 14th chapter of Matthew. Matthew chapter 14 verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. When Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, boisterous, he was afraid, and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, and saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. All right, let's have a little setting here to see what's been going on. Right before this, Jesus has fed the 5,000, and these guys have seen this. They've seen exactly what Jesus has done. They've been with him. They know him. Uh, you know, they have seen all kinds of things, experienced all kinds of things, heard Jesus say things that were just astounding, you know, his teaching. They have given up everything in their life to follow him. He would walk by and say, come follow me, and they would go with him. I mean, these guys gave up their livelihood, everything they had. They walked away from their families. Now, that doesn't mean they weren't taking care of them because we can see that they go back to them every once in a while. But they went full-time in the ministry is what we would say. They were devoted to it. They were going around with Jesus, uh, eating with him, sleeping in the same places he did, you know, and uh, just all of these things. But in this immediate instance... They've seen him feed 5,000 people with just a handful of food and then food left over. So, you know, this this has got to be amazing to their minds. You would think, well, they're going to look at him and know that everything's possible with him. There is no uh, thing in this world that he can't do. And in their mind, I'm sure they knew that. But see, they were having a little heart trouble, and so do we. We have these times when we we don't in our heart, rely upon Jesus. And if you don't, well, thank God for that. I'm glad you don't, but I know I do at times. In my head, I know what I've experienced. I know what I've seen God do. I know that I can depend upon Him. But there's at times in my heart, it just doesn't seem to match. You know, and, and so you say, well, it ought to be just the opposite. No, no, it's not. Not for me. I've got the head knowledge, but the old heart, you know, right here, it just... It has trouble grasping onto it. So that we see that these guys have seen this, and they've seen what he's done. In verse 22 it says, And straightway, and that means right after that, Jesus told them to get into a ship and go before him to the other side. Now, I'm sure that they probably wondered, I would have wondered, well, why, why do you want us to go? Why don't you want to go with us? What is going on? Well, Jesus needed a little time alone to pray, for one thing, because that's what he said he did. But he was going to teach them something as well. He knew what he was doing. He said, you go get in this ship, and you go the other side. He said, I'll get these people to leave and go back home. He said, he's going to send the multitudes away. Those people he had just fed, He's going. he's telling them, you know, you're going to go home. And so Jesus is taking care of these things. He said, you guys don't worry about this. I'll handle it. You just go ahead and you go over to the other side. And so uh, it says when he would sent the multitudes away, which is exactly what he said he was going to do, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. He had a lot of people around him. Now you would think that somebody that was, was wanting to be famous would want these people around. Well, that's just the case, but that's not what Jesus was wanting. That's not why he came to earth. It wasn't what he was desiring. It wasn't what he was out to do. He was not there to be famous and have people, an entourage around him. In fact, he needed that time alone. That tells me 
But folks, I don't care if we've gone through some great times. We've seen some great times. Uh, we've seen things that the Lord has done. We need time alone. We need time alone with the Lord. He said he went apart to pray, and he was there alone. We need that. We need the the one-on-one -on -one time. I mean, it's great to be with people and, he, and be with God's people and, and those that will lift us up. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but we need that time alone so that we can converse with him and, and meditate upon him, read his word, uh, not have these other distractions. There, there are so many distractions in our world today. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, television, uh, devices of all kinds, games, uh, you know, people, it just, there are all kinds of diversions that will, that will keep our attention away from God. You know, and, and I'm going to tell you that sometimes uh, I have had times where the only time I really had alone was when I was driving in the car. And, uh, you know, I would try to take advantage of that. I would try to be praying, you know, and I know people might have gone by and said, well, what's that guy's talking to himself? And I'd be praying, you know, I'd even turn the radio off, you know, not even listen to that, just and get those spots where nobody was coming and nobody was behind me and just, just pray to the Lord, you know, and people come on, okay, whatever. We need that. Jesus did it. We need to follow his example. And so much of this, we see what he did. Well, let's mimic that. To be a Christian is to be Christ-like. That doesn't mean we can be like him, but we can sure attempt it. We can try. And if he was doing something, then it was the right thing. So he went apart so that he could be alone and pray. And you say, well, what was he praying? It doesn't really say right here, but he may have been praying for those guys. He may have just been praying, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, you know, Father, you know. And But he was praying. This was an example to us of what we should be doing. And so we got the disciples. They're in a ship. They're going to the other side. We've got Jesus who has gone off by himself. And he's praying, and I'm sure the disciples are thinking, How's he going to get to the other side? But, oh, no big deal. He just fed 5,000 people. He can get to the other side. He'll get somebody to give him a ride. Uh, he'll, he'll just talk to them, and they'll, they'll do it, you know. Uh, I'm sure that they were probably not really that worried about him because they thought he knows how to do this. He can do all kinds of things. But then they end up in something else. They end up in a storm. And it said, but the ship. So that verse 24, and it changes but the ship. So we're talking about Jesus. We see that he is praying. He is alone. He's he's uh, conversing with the Father. And it says, but the ship, there's something different going on with them. Jesus is having his alone time, his calm, and, and uh, what he needs. That's not what's going on with these disciples. Folks, you may be going into a storm right now. Maybe things have been going good. And you're just looking at it and think, well, God's going to take care of me and everything's going to be all right. Well, maybe there's a storm approaching. And I'm, throughout our lives, we will either be going into a storm in the middle of one or coming out of one. That's just the way life is, and that's what goes on. And sometimes it's just a mess, and sometimes we just look at it and, oh, what in the world? And and that's that's okay. It's all right to say, I don't understand this, God. It's all right to go, you know, I need a little help here. Because it's but the ship was now in the midst of the sea. So it was in the middle. It wasn't right near the edge. Now, some I, I've read things and I see things. And, they, and I, I, I watched a documentary one time and they said, well, they were right near the shore and there were stones there. And Jesus walked on those stones and it appeared that he was walking on the water. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say they were near the shore. If they were that near the shore, they could have got out themselves. It said they were in the midst of the sea. They were, they were in the middle of it. They were out. They were out far enough that it was dangerous. They were out far enough that they couldn't just get out and get back to the shore. They were out far enough that no one could just walk on some stones and get there and have the appearance of walking on water. You'll hear all kinds of explanations for this and people that sound like they, they really know what they're talking about and they probably got initials behind their name and they're some kind of scholar and they're, they're an unbeliever. Uh, they're going to hell and, and they need help. They need Jesus Christ is what they need. But they're going to make up the excuses and, and their whole purpose is trying to sway people away from believing in God's word. To say that's not really true. But this word is true. Every single word, every single letter, all of it is correct. And we need to pay attention to this. It said in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves. So it was tossed with the waves, going back and forth. It wasn't just a gentle swaying. 
This thing was rocking and rolling. It was going. It was hard for them to hang on. He said, for the wind was contrary. You know, <clears throat> when you're contrary, you're not getting along. If you say someone is contrary, they're a contrary person. They don't get along. They're, they're uh, always causing problems. They cause them waves. Uh, in today's terminology, we might say that they're into drama. Uh, they like that. They like those kinds of things. So this wasn't a person. It was the wind. It was contrary. It was awful. It was not uh, behaving the way they would want it to behave. We look at our life, and we would like it to behave a certain way. We have plans. We have things set down and this is the way it should be you know and this is the way how i want it to be and and we even we even apply this to our christian life and we'll say well i've been doing what i'm supposed to i've been following after the lord and and this should happen and that should happen and everything should fall into place because that's our nature that's the way we want things that's the way we look at things we think okay everything's going to fall into place it's kind of like tracks you know uh, if you ever get on a dozer and you watch that and that track just keeps on rolling around and, and each cleat is going down there and, and getting in its place and one falls after another but every once in a while a pin will come out and boy it all goes apart and it doesn't work right and that's what happens in our lives well these guys were going across the sea and they were expecting everything to be okay why because Jesus told them to go there so you may be doing exactly what you've been told to by the Lord and all of a sudden a storm comes along that doesn't mean you're in the wrong place that doesn't mean you're not doing the right thing that's our inclination to just grasp onto that. And, and we see this in the Bible as well, asking, well, who sinned, his father, his mother, or anything like this. You know, These are the things that we do, but that's not the case. Keep on. If, if the Lord puts you on the path, you're on the right path. But I'm sure these guys were thinking, what in the world is going on? He told us to go across here. He told us this is what we should do. I, you know, I, I can just imagine, and I, I, I can imagine that I would be doing the same thing. Thing, Lord called us, Lord told us, He told us to go across here, and we're going to die out here, and He's not with us. If He was with us, everything would be okay. There's the kicker. He's always with us. Even when we think we're alone, He's still with us. He said, I'll be with you always. That's what it means. He promised that. That's what He said. They're out in the sea. It's tossed with the waves and contrary. And I'm going to tell you, folks, I'm not a, much of a water person. And I've been out when it got a little bit rough, and I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. If it's not calm, I don't like it. These guys were experienced, and yet it was contrary to them. They were experienced in these storms and things like this and the water, and but yet this was something that was bad. How do we know it's bad? Because it says it right here. Okay, it says in the fourth watch, this has been later on in the evening, toward night there, Jesus came walking on the sea. I want you to hear this again. Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. It doesn't say he was walking on rocks. It doesn't say he had a little paddle board. It says he was walking on the sea. You say, well, no one can do that. We can't. But Jesus can. Now, I will tell you, I was raised up in the church, so I knew these stories, and I always thought about this, and, and I would try things. And I remember uh, uh, going to a creek. My granddad had some land rented, and we would go up there, and there was a creek there, and, and uh, you could uh, the water was close to the bank, at the top of it, right in this spot where we would swim. And I would get out there, and I would run as fast as I could on the land and get on the water and try to move my feet like I was walking on the water. I didn't really walk on the water, and it didn't last very long because I would sink every time. But, you know, I would just think, well, maybe, maybe, maybe something will happen, you know, and as a kid would. But Jesus was walking on the water. He wasn't trying to run as fast as he could. He was walking. And there's a storm. There's a storm going on, and yet Jesus is walking. It doesn't say he was hurriedly trying to get by. Now, why did he walk to them or close to them? He could have gone any way he wanted to. He knew where they were. He knew they were going to need him. He knew he was going to be there for them. And as he walks, and there's other places in the gospel that uh, they looked out, they thought it was a ghost, a spirit. He said, is this a spirit? And they cried out for fear. Even when Jesus was there, they mistook him for something else. 
And he thought, oh no, 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 we're 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 in danger here. You know, he this is this is bad. He said, but straightway, Jesus spoke unto him. Jesus spoke to him. And he said, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. So Jesus speaks to him and tells him, he said, it's okay. It's okay. It's me. It's me. You can look at me. He said, don't be afraid. What does that mean? They were afraid. They were already afraid of the storm, which was bad enough. And they see this. And now they see Jesus, but they think it must be a spirit. You say, well, why did they think it was a, Jesus, a spirit? They knew Jesus. Well, the storm is raging. And they see somebody walking on the water. What would you think? Wouldn't you be surprised? Wouldn't you say, there's something wrong with this? I'm going to tell you what, if I'm out fishing or something and somebody comes walking on the water, I'm going to think, something's on right here. I just ate a bad sandwich or something. You know, there. <laughs> this is this is not right. It just It's just not what you see. It's not what you expect to see. It's not, especially during a storm. But he says, be of good cheer. That's what Jesus is saying to us in the midst of our storms. He's saying, it's okay. I'm right here. It's me. It's okay. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Are we going to be? Probably. Probably. Maybe at first. Maybe we calm down. You know, I see in the Psalms where David writes things like that, where you can tell he's, he's afraid of his enemies. He's afraid of what is going on. He's afraid of how it's going, what's going to happen. And he has this fear, but at the end of it, he says, but it's okay. You're you're the Lord. You're the Lord. You can take care of all this. It's all going to be okay. So we see the guys, they're following after Jesus. They've done what he said. They find themselves in a storm. We can relate to this. We may be doing exactly what he wants. And I'm going to tell you out there, preachers, uh, that you're listening, sometimes we get in that place and we think, oh, must, must be doing something wrong. That's not the case. You may be doing exactly what the Lord wants you to do, but see, there's other people involved in this. There's other things involved in this. There's the storms of this world. There's the storms of mankind. It's those people that are contrary in your life. It's the things that are contrary. It's the things that, that happen in life. They may put you down. may get you in a bad spot. may make you feel like it's all falling apart. I've been there. Others have been there. We know that. But Jesus is there. He's always there. He knew exactly what he needed to do, and he came to him. Here's where we get to Peter. And I'm going to tell you something. Peter walked on the water twice. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, and I'm going to show you. Peter spoke up here. Now, to me, this shows some serious doubt on his part. But he said, and Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water. So he said, okay, if it's you, tell me to come out there. He's challenging, trying. You know, I'm not sure it's you, but if it's you, you tell me to come. Verse 29, he's, and he said, come. He didn't say, no, Peter, man, it's me, don't worry about it. He just says, come. Now Peter gets out of the boat. Sometimes, folks, we've just got to get out of the boat. We've got to get out of that boat that, that seems like it's protecting us and it's not really doing what it should be. Maybe it's tossed about. We're clinging to it, and it feels, it feels more comfortable than, than trying to weather the storm. And we'll say, oh, if I only had him. But he's saying, come, it's okay. Grab my hand here. And when Peter was coming down out of the ship, it says he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He walked on the water, but he wasn't doing it of his own accord. He wasn't doing it just so he could get to where he wanted to go. He wasn't doing it on his own. He was doing it to get to Jesus. You see, Jesus can do these kinds of things. He can let us weather the storm. He was walking. The storm was still going on. But he was walking on the water and he was going to Jesus. 
That's exactly where we need to go. We need to take our friends to Jesus. But first, they need to know that we go to Jesus. They need to know that when they see us in life storms, that we're going to Jesus. It is not easy sometimes to go to Jesus in these instances. It's hard to grasp maybe what you're going through, maybe what's going on, but you need to go to Jesus. Take it to Him. Say, I'm coming to you, Lord. Just bid me come. I'm, I'm on my way. And that's what Peter did. And Peter did a good thing here. He stepped out of the boat and he walked to Jesus. So we look at him and we might criticize Peter in so many ways. And Peter was up and down, but that just means he's human. All the disciples were. They were up and down and, and uh, here and there. And, and we are too. But he still loves us. He still cares for us. He loved Peter. And he told him, he said, step out. Even after Peter denied him, like he told him would, he still said, I've got a job for you. I've still got something for you to do. Now I'll tell you, these storms may be shaping us for where we need to go next. Or the task that Christ has given us. It may be shaping us. It may be beating us here and there to shape us to the point that we are going to be exactly where he needs us so that we can do that. Maybe the storm is so that you can weather it with somebody else so that you can say, I've been there. I know what this storm is like. I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. You know, I, I always question this right here. How come all of them didn't get out? How come all of them didn't go, hey, Peter's Peter's getting out. They saw him walking on the water. Why didn't they all bail out and go, hey, I'm walking with him too? They all stayed in the boat. They were afraid. Afraid to go to Jesus. Whatever is in your life, take it to Jesus. Take it to him. But here's the problem. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Jesus had just told them, don't be afraid. Peter had stepped out of the water. Peter was walking on the water, but he took his eyes off Jesus because he saw the storm. So he couldn't have been looking at Jesus anymore. He had to have been looking around the storm, and I'm sure it's raining, it's pouring down, you know, and, and uh, the wind is blowing, and he it's, it's awful. And he's probably thinking, in an instant, I was okay in the boat, but now I'm going to drown. I shouldn't have walked out of the boat. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have gone to Jesus. I should, you know, I'm sure that his mind was flooded. I'm telling you, your mind can work extremely fast in those instances. Just uh, in a moment's time, you have all kinds of thoughts. And I'm, I'm just thinking in the way I would think. And I'm, I'm stepping out of this boat and I'm walking on the water. But I look around and I see all this storm. And I'm thinking, I could have been in the boat. I could have waited for him. I could have waited for him to come to me. I could have been there with the rest of the guys and they could have helped me and maybe we could have made it to the other side. Everything. But he was afraid. Are you afraid today? Maybe you are. I, I can understand that. Fear is a very real thing. It's a crippling thing in many times. And I think that's what the guys were. They were still in that boat. They were crippled with fear. For a small period of time, Peter's fear went away. He wasn't afraid, and he stepped out because he kept his eyes on Jesus. Where's our focus to be? It's supposed to be on Jesus. He said he wants a preeminence. He looks at the storm, and he said, beginning to sink. I'm telling you, every single word in this Bible is very important and we need to pay attention to what it says. It says he was beginning to sink. Didn't say he sank. It said he was beginning to sink. And he still knew where to find help. Maybe you've stepped out of the boat. Maybe you're beginning to sink. You need to do this. It said he cried saying, Lord save me. Now, maybe today you don't have Christ as your personal Savior. Maybe you have not given your life to Him and have Him in your life, indwelling in you, that you can turn to. When you hit the storms, you're just trying to do it yourself. 
You know, you're, you're just being battered from every angle and you say, I don't know what you're talking about. You can have Jesus Christ, your Savior. You can cry out today, Lord, save me. What are you going to be saved from? Your sin. That sin that's going to send you to hell. That sin that earns the wages of death. That sin that we all have because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That sin, you saved from that sin because Jesus has paid the debt already. He paid the debt for you. He paid the debt for me. He paid the debt for the world. But we've got to accept that free gift. We've got to cry out to Him and say, "Look, I'm, I'm not doing it myself anymore. I don't want to. I'm doing uh, terrible here and I need your help, Lord. He said, Lord, save me. And I'm going to tell you right, I, I'm calm when I say that, when I say, Lord, save me. I don't think he was calm when he said it. I believe he was yelling at the top of his lungs and with a desperation in his voice that was evident to everyone around him. And that's okay. It's all right to cry out to the Lord in that way. Maybe you need that little alone time. You need to cry go out and just yell at the top of your lungs. Get in your car and drive and just yell at the top of your lungs. Lord, save me from this storm I'm in. I think he had such desperation in his voice. Crying out, the guys in the boat heard it. Lord, save me. And I'm going to tell you, this is one of my favorite parts of the Bible. And I know I say that a lot because there's so many of them. They said, and immediately. I've got that word highlighted in my Bible because I want to rely upon that promise. Rely upon what Jesus does. It says, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. I'm going to tell you what, you know, if I was Jesus and I was looking at him, I, I, you know, I've said this time and time again, I probably would have dunked him a few times. Grabbed him by the top of the hair and dunked him a little bit and go, hey, when are you going to ever learn? But he didn't. He said he immediately stretched forth his hand and caught him. Immediately. As soon as Peter said, Lord, save me, immediate. Immediate. He didn't wait. He didn't tarry any at all. He immediately grabbed him and he grabbed his hand and caught him, he says, and, and said unto him. Now, he did talk to him now. Listen to this. O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? I, you know, and today I would, I, you'd probably look at him and go, oh, come on, Peter. Now, what's going on with you? You've seen all this stuff. How come you were doubting? He taught him, but he saved him. He told him the truth, but he saved him. He let him know something that he needed to know. He said, wherefore did you doubt? How come you're doubting? You know me. You know what I do. You were walking on the water. How come you had some doubt and it, it messed you up here? He, whatever it is, he still caught him. He still saved him. Now, here's what I'm telling you right now, that Peter walked on the water twice. He was beginning to sink, so he was starting to go under. Jesus caught him. In verse 32, and when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. When they, when Jesus and Peter were coming to the ship, you say, well, how do you know that? Because the other guys were still there. They never got out of the ship. The only two that weren't in the ship anymore was Jesus and Peter. And see, when they came, and I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think Jesus drug him through the water halfway sunk. He caught him, he pulled him up, and they walked back to the ship. They walked together. Jesus will walk with you. See, Jesus said, come. And as soon as he yelled out to him, he took him, and they walked back to the ship. And then the wind ceased. Wow. Now the wind's gone. The storm's gone. Everything's okay. Why? Because they're with Jesus. And Jesus is with them. And even if there was a storm, they'd still be safe. And they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Made a believer out of him, didn't it? Maybe somebody needs to see you going through the storm, walking back to the ship, before they're going to, believe maybe they need that today as a child of god maybe they need to see you maybe they need to see what you're going to do when you're going through the storm and go there's something real about this maybe today you need to accept christ you need to give your life over to him you say i need jesus i want to accept him as my personal savior i want to give it all to him you can do that today the bible says if you'll confess the lord jesus and make him lord of your life 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You can do that today. Whatever's going on with you, Jesus is the answer. I'm telling you, Jesus is the answer to the world's problems. You say, will that make gas prices go down? No, because we live in this world. But we're not of this world because we belong to Jesus. But it will make you be able to endure it and know that this storm will pass. The wind will cease. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. My name is Charles Morgan, Word is Live Ministries.